Sunday, September 2nd, 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, this next video is about California sinking, and I didn't realize it was literally sinking this much. My wife found this article yesterday. It's dated August 29th, 2018, right around five days old. It's from Cornell University, and a couple of professors from Cornell did a study here recently in this section here of Southern California. And I want to give you some numbers here in a minute that are actually quite staggering. Groundwater loss prompts more California land sinking, call it subsidence. And we're going to come back to that here in a minute. But I want to talk a little bit about California as it's a very unique state. It's basically a nation in a nation, in my opinion. It produces some of the world's finest fruits and vegetables. It's one of the few places on earth where you can go skiing in one morning and be surfing the same day that afternoon in less than 150 miles. And if you have time, you can stop and play around a round of golf in between. It's a very unique, diverse state. And all of this soil you see through this valley or these series of valleys is some of the finest soil on earth. And it's home to some of this incredible agriculture that you see here. Almonds, apples, apricots, artichokes, the list just goes on and on. But unfortunately, during times of uh, extreme drought, in fact, I know of a guy that lost an almond farm due to the drought back in uh, 2014, I believe it was. And I know he's probably not alone. But they produce some incredible fruits and vegetables, avocados, celery, cauliflower, uh, grapes, garlic, figs, lemons, lettuce. It goes on and on and on. There's a part down in Southern California, I believe it's near Imperial Valley. This area, right back in here. Again, some of the finest soil on earth. But the thing of it is, to properly manage the soil, to produce those types of fabulous crops that are shared, you know, like I said, not only throughout America, but around the world, takes a lot of water. And let me give you some numbers that will kind of help make sense of this subsidence that we're seeing here, or they discovered right in this area here. The ground is sinking in some areas at a half a meter a year. That's almost a little over 16 inches per year. The ground is sinking in some places. But let me explain something about the great state of California. Like I said, it's a very diverse, unique state. But here's some numbers. The California population since 1970, let's look at 1970. You're right in here. The population was 19 million. Now it's up near 40 million. In fact, it's just a little over 40 million. So the population has doubled in 48 years. You have to ask yourself, has the water supply doubled in 48 years? More than likely not. So you have twice as many people, so there's twice as much water consumption just with people. The farming has probably expanded as a result of 20 million more people. Let's face it, they have to produce more food. And not only food for, you know, the local economy, but for exports. They export a lot of food. A lot of great things come out of California. It's a very big, complex state. But here's the thing. How much water does just, just a person, say for instance, how much water does the average person use at home per day? And keep in mind this number here, the California population. Let's use 40 million as an example. It's pretty close. In fact, I think uh, by some standards it's over, just over 40 million. How much water does the average person use per day? Estimates vary, of course, but each person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water per day. Are you surprised that the largest use of household water is to flush the toilet and to take a shower and bath? Think about that. If you have 40 million people, and we're going to use a conservative um, set of numbers here, instead of 80 to 100 gallons per day, because you know that, that toddlers, newborns, they don't use that much water a day. So we're going to take this equation and, and take this number by 50%. So we're going to use 40 gallons per day, just to kind of offset the non-usage from toddlers and infants. So if you take 
40 million people, which is approximately the population of the state of California, 40 million now, and let's say that each person, just people now, are using 40 gallons per day. That's over 1.6 billion gallons of water per day being consumed by just people, just for personal needs, not for farming or, you know, entertainment or anything else, just for consumption. Not necessarily completely consumption, but showers, personal hygiene, things like that. 40 gallons per day. And that's probably a low estimate. So 1.6 billion for personal use. Now you factor in the agriculture and it gets quite astounding. So what has happened during these droughts, this uh, study from Cornell University, and these people are professors, so they're smart people, they know what they're doing. Um, despite the higher than normal uh, rain amounts of early seven, 2017, the large agriculture and metropolitan communities that rely on groundwater in Central California experienced only a short respite from an ongoing drought, and the ground has continued to sink, check this out, by up to half a meter annually. That's what this graph here is showing. 50 centimeters in the areas that are yellow, highlighted in yellow. Let's go back to Google Earth, and that's this area right in here. And this is just the area that they, they surveyed, right in through here, and you can see the farmland some of the best farmland on earth. But what they had to do to survive the drought, they had to pump water from underground aquifers. And a side effect from this deep pumping from the auto, uh, underground uh, aquifers was the aquifers shrank. So even when the water table does go back up, the, the aquifers don't have the same capacity that they did, say, 30 years ago. So they're not going to hold as much underground water. And let's say that the, the ground uh, subsidence has changed the, the angle of the, the terrain. So let's say water that used to drain in certain areas, certain ways, if it's shifted by five or six feet, that could alter the direction of the underground water aqueducts. So it creates a domino effect. So they could have a lot of rain, but if the underwater or if the underground aquifers aren't managing the water like they're used to, and they can't hold as much as they used to, you know, where does this drought problem ever end? You know, you got the ground sinking now, you got the population rising. Let me speak for Arizona. And I've noticed out here in Arizona, the population in the Phoenix and the Phoenix metropolitan area has doubled in the last five years, at least. The, I, I just know that there are way more people out here now than there were five or six years ago. It looks like it's doubled. The traffic out here in the Southeast Valley looks like L.A. It, during rush hour, and it never did for years. So there's a lot of people out here. They get their water. Well, we get our water, the majority of our water, from Hoover Dam. And we all know the situation at Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, Lake Mead, has been very low for years. Guess who has water rights to this water here at Hoover Dam? California. So, you know, if the water situation gets low, which simple math will tell you, like California, if you have 40 million people using 40 gallons a day, that's 1.6 billion per day. The ratios out here are a little different because we don't have 40 million people in the Phoenix area, but still, you know, it's the desert, it's dry. We use a lot of water per day. I know I drink probably a gallon just myself. I'm not counting the other water that I use throughout the course of a day. But it comes from Hoover Dam, Lake Mead, the majority of it. I know we have water reserves in the ground out here in Arizona, but that's only going to last so long, especially if your populations keep growing. But anyway, back to the water rights. If um, Lake Mead gets below a certain level, and I think I have those numbers right here, Lake Mead. You can see how low Lake Mead has been for years, and it's only getting lower. Lake Mead water table, if it gets below a certain level, and I want to say it's 900 feet. Right now, it's at 1,078. So if it gets below 900, that's when the 
water restrictions go uh, into effect and the first place to lose water from what I understand or at least water from the Hoover Dam Lake Mead complex is Las Vegas and it sits right next to Las Vegas so go figure that one second is Arizona then any water remaining goes to California California is never out of the loop with regard to water from the Hoover Dam Lake Mead system so at least they'll always get water from there but still it doesn't make the drought or the ground subsidence go away um, the ground is sinking literally by up to 16 inches annually in, in some places of Southern California due to the, the drought so that was an unbelievable number that I found quite astounding I didn't realize it was that that much I knew it had been sinking some and this study was done by professors so these people are top-notch they know what they're doing and I'll post the link to this well-written article from Cornell down below in the description box but California parts of California are sinking these yellow areas you see that's up to 50 centimeters per year so you have less groundwater bigger population it's going to start the domino effect which is going to affect agriculture they've got some of the finest soil on earth there but if you can't water it properly, then you can't grow things properly. So it just leads from one thing to another to another. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day and be safe out there.